والات ولیکم و بالبراءت من اعدائکم و الناصبین لکم الحرم و بالبراءت من اشیاعهم و اتباعهم اینی سلم لمن سالمکم و حرب لمن حاربکم و ولی لمن والاکم و عدب لمن عداکم فأسأل الله الذي أكرمني بمعرفتكم ومعرفة أوليائكم ورزقني البراءة من أعدائكم أن يجعلني منكم في الدنيا والآخرة وأن يثبت لي عندكم قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة قدم صدق في الدنيا والآخرة وأسأله أن يبلغني المقام المحمود لكم عند الله وأن يرزقني طلب الثاري مع إمام هدى ظاهر ناطق بالحق منكم وأسأل الله بحقكم وبالشعن الذي لكم عنده أن يعطيني بمصابي بكم أفضل ما يعطي مصابا بمصيبتي مصيبة ما أعظمها وأعظم رزيتها في الإسلام وفي جميع السماوات والأرض اللهم اجعلني في مقام هذا ممن تناله منك صلوات ورحمة ومغفرة اللهم اجعل محياي محيا محمد وآل محمد ومماتي ممات محمد وآل محمد اللهم إن هذا يوم تبركت به بنو أمية وابن آكلة الأكباد اللعين ابن اللعين على لسانك ولسان نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله في كل موطن وموقف وقف فيه نبيك صلى الله عليه وآله اللهم لعن أبا سفيان ومعاوية ويزيد ابن معاوية عليهم منك اللعنة أبد الأبدين وهذا يوم فرحان به آل زياد وآل مروان بقتلهم الحسين صلوات الله عليه اللهم فضاعف عليهم اللعن منك والعذاب العليم اللهم إني أتقرب إليك في هذا اليوم وفي موقف, وها وفي موقف هذا وأيام حياتي بالبراءة منهم واللعنة عليهم وبالموالاة لنبيه وآل نبيك عليه وعليهم السلام اللهم لعن أول ظالم ظلم حق محمد وآل محمد وآخر طابع له على ذلك اللهم لعن الإصابة التي جاهدت الحسين وشايعات وبايعات وتابعت على قتله اللهم لعنهم جميعا السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين اللهم خص أنت أول ظالم باللعن مني 
وابدع به أولا ثم العن الثاني والثالث والرابع اللهم العن يزيد خامسا والعن بيض الله بن زياد وابن مرجان وعمر بن شع وعمر بن سعد وشمر وآل أبي سفيان وآل زياد وآل مروان إلى يوم القيامة اللهم لك الحمد حمد الشاكرين لك على مصابهم الحمد لله على عظيم رزيتي اللهم ارزقني شفاعة حسين يوم الورود وثبتني قدم سنق عندك عندك مع الحسين وأصحاب الحسين الذين بذلوا مهاجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام صلوات على محمد وعلى محمد Inshallah, I would like to request everyone to please recite a Fatiha for all the Marhumins, for the marhu for your Marhumins, for the people, for the Marhumins who for whom there is no one there to recite Fatiha for, for all the Shahuda and uh, for anyone who you can remember. Inshallah, please recite a Fatiha. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الذي جاء أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for the beautiful tilawat of the Holy Quran and the ziyarat ya Ashura. Alhamdulillah, as I've mentioned before, that we are blessed with Sayyid Hazrat Hasan's presence for this Ashraf Muharram al Haram. And just like every night, a brief introduction of the Sayyid. He was born in Manchester and raised in London. He, after completing his A-levels, he went to Hausa of Amirul Mu'minin in Qom. He's been studying there for eight years, uh, specifically uh, in Fiqh and the Holy Quran. And inshallah, we will have Sayyid for the next few nights as well. And also just to mention, uh, for the brothers who came a bit late today, we will be starting at 7.30 sharp every day for the till Shabi Ashur. And then the Ashur timings will be uh, after the Namaz Zuhur. So if I can please request all of you to come a bit forward as well before I invite the Sayyid uh, so we can have uh, alhamdulillah a nice gathering of the Majlis. So please read aloud Salawat and I would request Sayyid Haider Hasnan to please come on the member and address the Majlis for tonight. Ba'awadi Bulan Salawat. For all of the shuhada who've watered this religion with their blood so that we could have it today as a gift to their noble souls, please recite a salawat with Surah Al-Fatiha. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير 
Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is the difference between a person who lives with a mission and a person who doesn't? A person who lives with a mission, everything about their life is different. Even if they may do the same actions, have the same seemingly mundane routine as others, everything about them is different. Everything a person with a mission does is at the service of that mission. When this person works, they work for the sake of their mission. If they earn money to provide for their family, they do it for the sake of their mission. Their working is different. If they eat food, they do it for the sake of their mission. If someone gets married and has children, they do it for the sake of their mission. Everything about a person who lives with a mission is different. That eating is different, even if it appears the same. That prayer is different, even if it appears the same. The same Quran that emphasizes the importance of establishing the prayer is the same Quran that says, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Woe to those who pray. There is a difference between the prayer of Amir al-Mu'mineen and my prayer. The ruku' is the same. The sajda is the same. The adhkar we recite are the same. Outwardly, it's the same prayer. But inwardly, can you compare them? The difference between someone who lives with a mission and someone who doesn't is like the difference between the heavens and the earth. You see, someone who doesn't live with a mission is resembles a zombie. They go to work because that's just what everyone else does. They get married and have children because that's just what everyone else does. They go through life in this very uh, strange and weird, half-hearted state until the end of their life. That life is not life. That kind of life is not life. That person isn't living. And the Quran teaches this to us. There are some people you see them walking, talking, eating, drinking, but they are dead because their heart is not alive. Their hearts have died. Their soul has died. Their reality is dead. A human being whose only concern in their life is to clothe themselves, to have a house, to eat, to drink, and to have children, what difference is there between such a person and an animal? We're just more complicated. Our houses are more complex. But the bird builds a nest for its family. The bird seeks food and sustenance for itself and its family. And so do we. We just do it in a more complex manner. Therefore, when a person lives with a mission, 
everything changes. A person with a mission is not lazy, cannot be lazy, cannot be lazy. When you have an exam that you need to pass the next, you need to pass it. Can you sleep the night for the exam? Can't sleep. Why? Because you understand the importance of this exam in determining your future, and that's important for you. So the Muslim who comes to his prayer doesn't have the same concentration. There's only one reason. He doesn't consider it important. Doesn't see the importance of that. How can it be so hard for a person to have hudur al qalb, presence of the heart in his prayer? All your prayers, five prayers in a day, take maximum half an hour the way we recite them. Half an hour. In this half an hour, my attention is everywhere except with Allah. But I can watch 90 minutes, some men in shorts, kick a ball across the field. My heart is there. Why? Because I don't have a mission. I don't have a mission. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Now I'd like you to imagine something. Imagine that you are in a racing lane. You know those huge arenas they have with like a racing track, those mega stadiums? The stadium is full, full. Everyone is watching. It's being broadcasted in the whole world <laughs> on TV. Millions more are watching at home and you are in a racing lane. And with you are many other racers. Everyone's getting ready for the race. But when that gunshot goes off, what happens? I stand there. Everyone starts running. I stand there looking left, looking right, picking the grass. And one of my friends is shouting at me from the stadium, hello, you're in a race, run quickly. You're gonna lose. I don't pay attention. This is the example of a human being who didn't find his mission. Because the reality is this world is a stadium and you are in a racing lane. Who says this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Sabiqu, compete. There is a competition going on in this world. Sabiqu, ila maghfiratim min rabbikum wa jannah. Compete towards the maghfirah of your Lord and paradise. Compete. Race. But I'm busy with everything except this race. Do you know who's watching? The stadium is full. The stadium is, we are being watched every single moment. By who? By the prophets. By the A'imma alayhim as -salam. By the shuhada, by the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And more important than anyone else, by Allah himself, the stadium is full. Every one of my thoughts is in front of these beloved ones. Every one of my actions is before them. And we mentioned the narration of the Imam alayhi salam some nights ago, where it's related, he said, don't bother and hurt Rasulullah. They said, how can we do that? We don't even live in his era. And it's related, the Imam said, don't you know your deeds are presented to him? He witnesses your deeds. When he sees an evil deed, it causes him pain. When he sees a good deed, it brings him happiness. The Imam all the time also is watching. We are in a stadium. Those who are clever, they're running. They're not paying attention to left and right and the grass and the sky. And they don't have time for these things. Who said, what about me? Who was together with who? What pathetic thing is on TV? They're not paying attention to these things. Do you know why? Because in a race, you only have limited time, right? You don't have forever. This day that's coming to an end now, there's one hour left of this day, will never be repeated. It's gone. You see, wealth comes and goes. 
Time only goes. Time is so important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by it in the Noble Quran. Wal Asr. I swear by time. So a human being who lives with a mission, he doesn't waste time. He doesn't have time to waste. He can't waste time. Because he recognized he has a mission. And his time's running out. And there is a competition. And this competition will never be repeated. On Judgment Day, the Quran tells us those who didn't recognize who they were and where they were and what the reality of this life was. They didn't recognize they had a mission. They will say, Ya laytani kuntu turaba. What that I was dust. What that I'd never been created as a human being. They will say, Oh Allah, let me go back just for one hour. And Allah says, Kalla, never. There's no going back. Go to the cemeteries. Look at all the graves who are there. Mountains of gold buried beneath the ground. Mountains of potential who could have done so much with themselves, with the world, buried untouched. Turning to dust. Is this why Allah created us? One human being has the power to change all of existence. Yes? If a human being begins by changing himself, existence will change easily for him. Musa alayhi salam stood there between the swords of the Fir'aun and his army on one side and the ocean in front of him. And the children of Israel were blaming him, saying, what have you done? What have you led us to? Either we drown in our blood and are killed by the swords or we drown in the sea. In that moment, Musa said, Kalla, inna ma'ya rabbi, sayyahdeen. In that moment, never, impossible. My Lord is with me, he will guide me. What did Allah do? So simple. Oh Musa, strike the sea. We'll open a way through the sea for you. No problem. But first become like Musa. First live with this mission and you will see these miracles. They're in the Quran for a reason. Came for us. The Lord of Musa is also our Lord. We will witness these miracles if we live with that mission. You know the saddest part about people who don't live with the mission? The saddest part is that you actually had a mission. It's one thing when those individuals who are secular and deny God, they speak about creating a mission for themselves, right? Because they believe that man creates reality. We don't believe that. And Islam means submission. Submission to what? To reality. Which means we believe there is something called absolute truth. It doesn't change based on people's opinions. Even they recognize that living with a mission is important. How terrible then that a Muslim doesn't live with a mission. When Allah has given us a mission, he has, we had a mission, and we didn't recognize it. We didn't try to recognize it. It wasn't important for us to find that mission. How terrible that is. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the human being, he mentioned this to the angels. Inni ja'alan fil ardi khalifa. I'm creating a khalifa a representative of my own self upon the face of this earth. That's how Allah introduced insan, the human being, to the angels. Is that how we live? Is that how I live? Do I feel that much greatness inside me? That I can be Khalifa to Allah? Or no, just living my life, mediocre, Muharram comes, come to the center, cry a bit, feel motivated, go back to your life. Shah Ramadan comes, Come again, read some Quran, feel motivated, go back to your life. Every, every single year, same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. Wallah, this is someone who's living in a state of loss. Let's not deceive ourselves. Did you find that mission or not? Did you find that mission or not? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
says in the noble Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا عرضنا الأمانة على السماوات والأرض والجبال فأبينا أن يحملناها وأشفقنا منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا Look at what the Quran sees the human being to be. Look at what the Quran sees the human being to be. Surely we, the, this we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speak out to his majesty. Surely we presented the trust, the amana, to what? To our greatest creations, to the heavens, not the sky. This sky is the lowest heaven. The other heavens are not physical. All the heavens, we presented this trust to it. The heavens, we presented this trust to the earth. We presented this trust to the mountains. All of them were afraid. And they said, we can't bear this trust. We can't bear it. It's too heavy. It's too difficult. It's too tremendous. The heavens couldn't bear this trust. The earth couldn't bear this trust. The mountains with all their greatness and majesty couldn't bear this trust. Who came forward and said, oh Allah, I can bear it. My existence is strong enough to bear this trust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hamalaha insan The human being comes forward and says, oh Allah, give it to me. This trust that your heavens cannot bear. This trust that your earth cannot bear. This trust that your mountains cannot bear. I will take this trust. This is who you are, O oh insan. You have been given such a huge and magnificent trust, amana, that no other creation could bear. It's been placed upon you. And you act like you're so small. You act like you're so small, wasting your life away. This isn't the shokr of the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. But what was that trust? That the heavens could not bear that. The earth couldn't bear it. The mountains shook when hearing it. They said, oh Allah, we can't, it's too great. But you can bear that trust. What was that mission Allah gave you? Allama Tabatabai rahmatullahi alayhi under this blessed ayah says that the name of that trust was al Wilayatul Ilahiya, Divine Wilaya. This is the trust that was given to every single one of us. What is Divine Wilaya? Now we're not here to speak about Wilayatul Faqih tonight. We have plenty of people doing that already. What is Divine Wilaya? Wilaya in one word means connection. When two things, physically or spiritually, are so close to each other, they are touching each other physically. If you are sitting next to a brother or a sister sitting next to a sister and their shoulders are touching, there is no gap between them, we can say this individual has wilaya with that individual. When two things are so close to each other, they are connected. That is the meaning of walaya. Al-insan, the human being, carries a connection that is so strong, so intense, the mountains could not bear it. The earth could not bear it. The seven heavens and their inhabitants, the angels couldn't bear it. Only al-insan could bear it. But connection to who? Connection to what? This is what gives meaning to our lives. This is why we need the Quran to introduce us to us. Because the world tells you you're nothing but a complicated machine. The Quran says, no, you're much more than that. This is the biggest insult to the human being. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. 
What was that trust? It was walaya. What is walaya? It's a connection that arises out of intense closeness. To who is insan so close? And where is this closeness found? When we look at the noble Quran, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa nahnu aqrabu ilayhi min hablil wareed. We are closer to man than his neck vein. Who? Ulama? No. Not something much greater. The Anbiya? No. Go up. The A'imma? No. Go up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. We are closer to man than his neck vein. How close is your neck vein to you? Allah says, I'm closer. Is this the only verse? No, there are many other verses. There are many other verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in the Noble Quran something arguably even more profound. Inna Allah yahulu bayna al mar'i wa qalbihi. Allah comes between man and his own self. Meaning what? Meaning, I'm closer to you. I'm more connected to you than you are to your own self. And that is exactly why, regarding the narration that you've all heard, man arafa nafsahu faqad arafa rabbah, the prophetic narration that states one who recognizes himself, recognizes his Lord, there are different opinions. One opinion is the one that we've all heard, that the way to reach Allah, the recognition of Allah, is to recognize yourself first. But when we look at the Quran, we find something else. Is it saying that? One who recognizes himself, recognizes his Lord? Or is it saying something even more profound? One who recognizes himself, already recognized his Lord. You see, the Quran is saying what? Allah is closer to you than you are to your own self. Not that if you want to recognize Allah, you have to recognize yourself first. Rather, if you want to recognize yourself, you have to recognize Allah first. Because what are you except an effect of His mercy? Can you understand what a wave is without knowing what the ocean is? Can you understand what a sun ray is without knowing what the sun is? What is the wave except the effect of the ocean? What is the sun ray except the effect of the sun? You are nothing but an effect of Allah's mercy. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Noble Quran that it seemingly, what seems from the verses to be what the verses are saying, before sending us into this realm, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took us because the Quran says we created you and then we told the angels to do sajda to Adam, meaning what? You existed then as well. Each of us, ex every one of us existed. We existed. In what form? In what realm? That's a different discussion. But we were present. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that in a certain realm, seemingly a place before this realm. And of course, it's a difficult discussion. Why? Because before, after, we only think within the context of time, which is relevant to this realm, not to the other realms in existence. But that's a different discussion. But seemingly, before, whatever that before means, this realm, there was a realm in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took us he brought us forth and he said to us, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? But before asking us, you know what he did? And Alama Tabatabai Rahmatullah explains this beautifully. Ashhadahum ala anfusihim. He made human beings witness their own selves. It's as if Allah put a mirror in front of you and he said, Look in the mirror. 
in that moment, he said, Alastu bi rabbikum, am I not your Lord? All of us said, Bala, yes, you are. Shahidna, we witnessed it. You know how incredible this is? It's as if someone, Shaykh Matahari explains, his teacher, Allah Matahari's words regarding this matter. Someone puts a mirror in front of you and says, look inside the mirror. What do you see? You saw your reflection. In that moment, the one who put the mirror in front of you said, did you see me? That's how close God is to man in, in, in Islam. You cannot know man without knowing God first. You can't define insan without knowing Allah first. You saw him in the mirror of your own being. Every human being entered this world with that knowledge of their Lord. We now enter as blank slates. And it's related, explaining this verse, Al-Imam Sadiq alayhi salam stated that that place was forgotten. That place was forgotten. That realm was forgotten, but that ma'arifah, that connection, that deep knowledge of the divine remained. Where? In the depths of your heart. You entered this world with that ma'arifah. And had that not been the case, it's related that Imam says, no one would have recognized their Lord. You recognize him because you knew him already. Yes. So where is that connection? Why do I feel so disconnected? If Allah is so close, why do I feel so disconnected? Look at that beautiful, majestic, heavenly dua that Abu Abdullah recites on the day of Arafah, in which it's filled with the deepest lines of spirituality, really. Doesn't the Imam say in that dua that, oh Allah, how can other than you be used as a proof to prove you when you are the most evident of all things? Blind is an eye that does not see you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when describing himself in the Quran says he's what? Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of all existence. Light is that which makes other than light evident. If there was no light here, I couldn't see you. I see you by means of light. You see, you perceive by means of light. Light is the most evident of all realities. How can other than light be used to prove the existence of light? Oh Allah, how can other than you be used to prove your existence? But where is this deep knowledge? Where is this walaya, this connection? You know, dear brothers and sisters, there's something we have to understand about the spiritual path in Islam. In Islam, the spiritual path is not that of reaching somewhere outside of yourself. It's not about gaining something, some kind of knowledge or experience from outside of yourself. No. It's the opposite. The spiritual path in Islam is about uncovering what is already inside you. You entered this world with treasure within you but it's buried deep inside. Is this my words? No, not my words. It's related that Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam stated the following, human beings, all people, all people, without exception, our minds, like the mines of gold and silver. This is how insan sees a human being. A sister who recognizes this, that she is a mine of treasure, of divine knowledge, is not going to spend two hours in the morning on her makeup before going into the world. But when we don't speak about these things, 
What can we expect? A brother who recognizes this is not going to be checking his hair and his beard and his eyebrows, mashallah, these days in every car mirror on the way to work or to university. Doesn't need validation from outside. Allah validated me. Allah gave me honor. I don't need other people. I don't care what people think. I don't need to share pictures on social media just to get some likes to feel good about myself. That's a very weak person. That's a person who doesn't feel they're important. But Allah already gave me the highest level of importance. I'm needless of that. Let people think what they want. All of these things are connected, brothers and sisters. We come and understand who we are, what our religion is saying, what Quran is saying, Ahl Bayt are saying. All of our problems will come to an end, really. If you only come and do that. It's all related, it's all connected. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put treasure inside us. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi mentioned that. But where is the treasure? When you go to a gold mine, when you go to a silver mine, is the treasure on the layer, on the first level of the ground? No, where is it? Deep down inside. He says human beings are mines. In a mine, where is the treasure? Buried deep, deep, deep down inside. What do you have to do to get that treasure? You have to dig. What is the purpose of Sharia? Ah? The purpose of Ahkam, the purpose of Akhlaq, the purpose of this religion? To make you dig. To make you dig. Digging where? Digging inside yourself. Until you reach that treasure. Until you reach that walaya, that connection that you already had. Just turn your attention inwards. But yes, a salah, a prayer, in which the presence of the heart is not there. It's just a bunch of rituals. Fasting, in which all you gain is hunger, thirst, and 30 kilos of the Shah Ramadan. That fasting, that prayer is not giving you much. Many people come right to the shore. They come right to the ocean and without even putting a finger in the water, go back. This is how some of us practice the religion, unfortunately. Only the outward. And it's related, someone who does that, you know what happens to them? The narrations tell us, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam inform us clearly. There are some individuals who gain nothing from fasting except hunger and thirst. And they inform us that that prayer in which your heart is not present, your attention is not there, you're doing ruku, you're doing sajda, you're reciting perfectly, but your heart is somewhere else, will only increase that individual in distance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, if we practice Islam in the complete sense, understanding that all the actions in Islam have an inward reality that are meant to accompany them, and that outward is just a shell for the inward. That is why it is important. Then every moment of my life, I'm digging. I'm getting closer to that walaya, that connection that I already have. And when that happens, you can no longer live without a mission. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This is the story of the human being, their brothers and sisters. And sadly, many human beings never even look inwards because the glamour of the dunya takes their attention outwards. Especially today in the age of media and mobile phones and technology and iPads and social media especially. This human being one hour of this human being's life is worth more than all the gold in the world. Wallah, really. One hour is enough to memorize a short surah of the Quran. 
which will be a light for you in dunya, in your grave. On judgment day, I will take you to paradise. But I don't do that. But hours go doing what? Scrolling. Scroll, 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 scroll. One miserable life after another. What's he doing? What's she doing? What's going on? Hours. Shaitan deceives. Shaitan deceives, doesn't want us to turn our attention inwards. Hours go by in these activities. But 24 hours, no time to open the Quran. Not once. 24 hours. Too busy for Quran. But there's time for everything else. Like they say, there's always enough time. It's a question of priorities. You want to find yourself? You want to find that mission Allah has given you? You have to be connected with the Quran. This is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rope of Allah manifested in this dunya in two forms. Same rope, two manifestations. The first is the book of Allah. The second is the Ahlul Bayt. Same rope. If the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam were to be a written version, it would be the Quran. And if the Quran was to be a human being, it would be the Ahlul Bayt. Yes, they're not two separate things. They're together. They're together. And we need to hold on to this rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we're to succeed as a human being. We need to hold on to this rope. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So have you found that mission? That's a question we need to ask ourselves. Have I found that mission or not? The prophets came, the A'imma came saying, dig inside yourself and we'll show you the way. The way is this religion, this Islam, this Sharia. That is the way. Just follow it in its complete sense and you'll find the treasure that was buried inside yourself. This is what gives meaning to our lives, gives purpose to our lives. How much have you dug? How much have you recognized who you are? How much have you found that mission? You know, the more you dig, the less you're able to be lazy. There comes a point you can't be lazy, it's impossible. You can't. Do you recognize who you are? The value that you have, what you can become, it's impossible to be lazy. You know, someone who wants to be of service to the Imam of the time, because this concept of walaya, al walaya al ilahiyya, is very much connected to the concept of the walaya of Ahlul Bayt, but we don't have time to explain that, unfortunately. Someone who wants to be of use to the Imam of the time has to be digging. Otherwise, we're just deceiving ourselves. You know, in one of the sermons of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he actually explains that one of the jobs of the Anbiya was the following. lahum dafa'in al to bring forth for people the intellects that had been what? Buried. He used the word dafa'in, buried. Deep underground. We spoke some nights ago about freedom and how a human being can be imprisoned by his own lower self. When the intellect is in a cage, is buried deep beneath an ocean of desires, of ego, of the lower self, the Anbiya came, oh human being, dig. Get rid of these veils. Find the treasure that's buried inside yourself. You know when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to use a word to describe a disbeliever, someone who disbelieves in the message, he used the word kafir. The word kafir actually means farmer. And it's used in this context in the Quran. Why would a farmer be called kafir? Because kafara, the action the farmer does is what? He covers the seeds in the ground. 
He covers the seeds with the soil. A disbeliever, a kafir is someone who covers the reality of his own self beneath his desires. That's the reality of kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not sworn or taken oaths in one place of the Quran more than he has in Surah Al-Shams. He swears by the sun, its brilliance, the moon, the self, the earth, and his own sacred essence. To say what? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا One who purifies himself succeeds. But I want to speak about the next verse. The second thing he says, وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا The one who does the fi'l, the action of dasa in Arabic, to his self has failed. What does dasa mean? What does dasaha mean? It means to cover. Allahu Akbar. Because you are a mine of treasure. But if you cover the treasure inside, you will fail. If you don't dig for it, you will fail. If your attention is always outward, not towards your own self, you will fail. We see that Aba Abdullah alayhi salam. Who is it that can join him? It's not the case that all those who didn't join Aba Abdullah alayhi salam in Karbala were evil people or were not mu'mineen or will go to hell. Not the case. It's not the case. But there are levels of closeness, of wilaya. There are levels. It's related, Imam al Sajjad alayhi salam said that, said salawat, O Shia, O Shia, don't worry about the fire. I'm paraphrasing what the Imam said. Don't worry about entering the fire. You won't enter hell. But rather, compete for the levels of paradise. For the levels of paradise are such that between two levels, between one level and the other, is the distance between the earth and the sky. There is a level in paradise where you are given so many pleasures. The best of all food, the best of all drinking, the best of all spouses. That is a level. But there is a level of paradise where you are given him. There is one part of the Quran which again is very much related to Aba Abdullah alayhi salam where what it speaks about is a different paradise altogether. And that is what the Urafa, the mystics, the spiritual teachers call Jannat al the paradise of the sacred essence. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Fajr, where it's related, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said that recite Surah Al-Fajr in your recommended and obligatory prayers, for surely it is the Surah of al Hussein. The end of Surah Al-Fajr, what does it say? One of the biggest examples of this is al Hussein alayhi salam. It says what? Allah is addressing his pure servant by saying the following. The servant of his who's reached the reality of Tawheed, of Walaya, who's found his own self, who's found his mission, who lived according to that mission and died according to that mission. Allah says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. O soul who is in a state of peace and tranquility. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya. Return to your Lord once more. You are pleased with him. And he is pleased with you. Fadhuli fi abadi. So enter into my servants. What khuli jannati? And enter into my garden. The only place in the Quran, Jannati, my paradise, is mentioned is right here. Where is the paradise of Hurul Ain? And fruits and trees. Where is the paradise of meeting him? Yes, they say there were two shuhada who were friends during the sacred defense, the eight-year war. Both of them became shaheed. They had a third friend 
who was again with them in battle, but he didn't become shaheed. He saw, he sees one of them in a dream. He says, wow, beautiful place you have. He sees the paradise, the gardens, the house, it's gorgeous, the palace. You're in a good place. What about that friend of ours that we had? He said, him? We're given permission to visit him once a year. Once a yes, yes. Not the Ahlul Bayt, another human being who is with you physically in this world. Where is the paradise of Hurul Ain and the paradise of being in the presence of Rasulullah? Can you compare them? You want to be a mediocre Muslim, average Muslim, you'll go to paradise. It's okay, no problem. But if you want to be in the paradise of the divine essence, the paradise of Al Hussein alayhi salam, you need to dig, find that treasure, find that mission. Because Al Hussein alayhi salam had a mission. Had a mission. And only those joined him who had a mission, who realized their mission. Yes, some realized later, some realized quicker, but they all realized. Al Hussein alayhi salam recognized his mission because he's the Imam, he knows who he is, he knows who his Lord is, he knows the reality of existence, he knows what this world is. He recognized it in the beautiful narration from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam of Ziyarat al Arba'in, where it's related the Imam does not only say, recite this Ziyarah, no, it's related, he said, recite it with presence of the heart, recite it paying attention to what you're saying. How does he describe about Abdullah and his mission? What did he do? You address Allah in this ziyarah saying the following. Oh Allah, he sacrificed his soul for you. Why? What was the mission? Why? He sacrificed his soul for you in order to save your servants from ignorance and the bewilderment of misguidance. He did that for Allah, but he did that for us. What is the shukr of this blessing? Do you know what Al Hussein alayhi is saying through his actions? It's as if he is saying, you know, if, if Islam being preserved and reaching those who are yet to be born, reaching you and me, if that requires for my children to be cut to pieces, if that requires the women of my household to be in chains and ropes, if that requires the earrings of Sukaina to be taken, so be it. Yes, that's how valuable Islam is to Hussein. Are we similar? Is the shukr of this blessing what I'm doing, how I'm living my life? He didn't just say that, he showed it. He loved us that much. He loved us that much, yes. But he's calling us today as well. He's calling us today. My family has to be a Husseini family. By following Islam when it comes to upbringing my children, my spouse. My lifestyle has to be a Husseini lifestyle. By following Islam in these matters. The way I remember Al Hussein Al Azadari has to be the way, be the way he wants. Not the way my desires dictate. This is what Al Hussein teaches us. Who can join Al Hussein alayhi salam? It's related, he said it from the beginning. Who can join him? If I remember correctly. It's related, the Imam alayhi salam himself said when he wanted to leave, I think Makkah towards Haraq, he said the following. Man kana. Badilan fina muhjata. One who is ready to sacrifice his soul for our sake. 
ومواطنا على لقاء الله نفسه one who is ready to meet his lord one who has prepared himself for the meeting of Allah falyarhal ma'ana let him come with us my brother my sister have you prepared yourself to join al hussein have i prepared myself these are the conditions going to paradise isn't hard but the Jannatul Hussein is something else. We have to prepare ourselves, stop deceiving ourselves, be honest with ourselves, fix ourselves. Sallallahu <laughs> alayka ya Aba Abdullah Sallallahu alayka ya Aba Abdullah Sallallahu alayka ya Aba Abdullah Shed these tears to prepare ourselves, to change ourselves. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. It's related in Ziyaratun Nahiya, one of the beautiful statements of Sahib al Zaman when addressing Abu Abdullah is the following statement. قد عجب آيات من صبرك ملائكة السماء Even the angels in the heavens were bewildered at your patience O Abba Abdullah What was he patient with so that we could have Islam So many things, so many things We can't bear to hear them all at once We divide the nights hearing little by little and still we hear of this story very little but Abba Abdullah you know the companions of Abba Abdullah each of them was martyred once but Abba Abdullah al Hussain wasn't only martyred once on the day of Ashura every time one of his companions would fall Al Hussein would die right now the love that Al Hussein had for his companions La ilaha illallah one of the companions of Abu Abdullah was the slave, the freed slave of Abu Dhar al Ghafari. They say his name was John. He was of African descent. La ilaha illallah. We still look down on Africans until today. This is our problem. Astaghfirullah al Azim. Unfortunately, we have to change this. La ilaha illallah, the slave was in the presence of Al Hussein alayhi salam. Aba Abdullah said to him, according to the maqtal it's related, he said the following You don't have to trouble yourself because of us. You didn't sign up to this when you wanted to be our servant. You've served us enough. Go and leave, they only want to kill me. Do you know what the servant says? We need to be, learn to be lovers like this servant of Abu Abdullah. He turned to Abu Abdullah saying, Ya Abu Abdullah, I accompanied you in ease and comfort. Do you think I can leave you in hardship? La ilaha illallah. It's related the servant went to the battlefield. He fought the enemies bravely. When he was, when he was attacked and fell upon the sands of Karbala, when he was breathing his final breath, 
This is something Shaheed Murtada Matahari mentions when he's recited Maqtah. such a beautiful moment. You know, there were two moments on the day of Ashura. There were two companions that Abu Abdullah, when he went to their side, he didn't go on his feet. Rather, he went on his knees. The way a child goes to his mother. The first of them was Ali and then Akbar. And the second of them was this very servant of Allah. He went to his servant's side the way he went to his own side. He went towards him. He couldn't continue and fell down on his knees. What else did he do? No, 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 no. The same thing he did to Ali and then Akbar. He put his cheek on the cheek of his servant. No, 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 no. But there's another musibah. I fear if you don't mention it tonight, it won't be mentioned. La ilaha illallah. The day of Ashura is coming. Ya sahib Another year went by because of my sins. He weren't allowed to appear. Another year went by because of my failings. La ilaha illallah. The pain of Karbala again reigns in your heart. Ya Sayyidi, can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Make me worthy. Make me like John, the servant of all of the law. Which musibah is that? That was very difficult. A musibah that Ahlul Bayt always remembered. Years after Karbala, it's related Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam would be walking in the market. He would go to a butcher and look at the animals that had been slaughtered. He'd say, oh Muslim, did you give this animal water before you slaughtered it? The man would reply by saying, Ya ibn Rasulullah, your grandfather, the messenger of Allah, taught us before you slaughter an animal, give it water. Before you slaughter an animal, make sure the knife is very sharp so it doesn't experience much pain. Why? Because it's a creation of Allah. It's living. Be merciful to us. The Imam's eyes would fill with tears. But weren't those who murdered my father calling them themselves Muslims, why did they murder him? Why did they slaughter him while he was thirsty beside the water of Farah? What scene is this? Al Hussein calls them to drink at the pond of Kawthar and they deprive his children the water of Al Farah. Till those final moments, he was trying to save them. He was giving them another chance, one after another. You want to kill me? I'm ready for Shahada. Just to have one request from you. Allow me to drink some water before you cut my neck. La ilaha illallah. In one of the maqatil, the following thing is mentioned. That when Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam appeared in Karbala to help the Bani Asad bury the bodies of the Shuhada, they found they began burying the bodies one after another. From a distance, they saw the Imam has fallen down at the feet of a certain body. He's broken down, he's weeping and weeping. Some of the Bani Asad went towards the Imam. Their eyes fell upon this blessed body. It was different to all of the Shada. It was as if there wasn't a single place in this body that had not been wounded with a sword or an arrow, or a stone. No, 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 no. It was as if the chest of this body had been trampled upon. Ya Ibn Rasulullah, who is this? Who is this? Who did they do this to? Whose body is this? I don't know what the Imam said. Allah knows better. But maybe he said, Bani Asad, don't you recognize him? This is the body of my father, Abu Abdullah. 
It's related to Imam buried his beloved father. When he closed the grave, he took his blessed finger. He wrote one sentence on the grave of Abdullah. What was that sentence? Hada Qabrul Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, alladhi qataloo at Shara. Oh, people know this. This is the grave of Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. They murdered him. They martyred him while he was thirsty. They didn't give him a drop of water. La la illallah. This musiba, the thirst of Abdullah is so severe for the Ahlul Bayt. It's related when Sahib Zawan appears at the Kaaba when he addresses mankind and introduces himself. He calls out in a voice that Allah delivers to all people. Allah ya ahlul alam, an al Mahdi. O people of the world, O inhabitants of the earth, I am the Mahdi. But after that, he mentions another statement. What is it that has been burning in the heart of Sahib al Zaman? In the heart of Sahib al Zaman, for over 1,000 years, he says the following: Allah ya ahlul alam. إن جدي الحسين قتلوه عشرة أو inhabitants of the earth they murdered my grandfather Hussein without giving him water وصلى الله على الباكين على الحسين Abba and Inshallah, the brothers can go and join for Matlam. Inshallah, we have a few minutes before Salat. Inshallah, come and join. Listen to the brothers. Come and join the Matlam of Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah. Abba Inshallah, brothers on the side, come form a line, inshallah. Do not be afraid of the martyrdom of Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah. Abba Abdullah. With your voices, inshallah. Inshallah, Karbala, Inshallah, Abhamdillah, 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 Abhamdillah. of heaven, O oh doors of heaven, you should not open, they betray you like the doors of your mother, O oh doors of heaven, you should not open, O oh doors of heaven, you should not open, they betray you like the doors of your mother. Go back, O oh master, protect the children. Go back, O oh master, protect the children. 
men, their evil eyes will oppress our women. Go back on Hussein, go back on Hussein. I am begging master, go back on Hussein, go back on Hussein, go back on I am begging master, go back on Hussein, go back on Hussein, go back on Hussein. I am begging master, go back on Hussein, go back on Hussein, go back on Hussein. I am begging master, go back on Hussein. Oh, doors of heaven, you should not open. Oh, doors of heaven, you should not open. They betray you like the doors of your mother. They betray you like the doors of your mother. Go back, oh master, protect the children. Their evil eyes will oppress our women. Go back, oh Hussein. Go back, oh Hussein. I am begging, master. Go back, oh Hussein. Go back, oh Hussein. Go back, oh Hussein. I am begging, master. Go back, oh Hussein. The hak zara. Go back, oh Hussein. Go back, oh Hussein. I am begging, master. Go back, oh Hussein. Go back, oh Hussein. Go back, oh Hussein. I am begging, master. Go back, oh Hussein. I stood for prayer. I stood for prayer that lasted longer than the ink upon all the Kufa's letters. Their pens are weapons, their words are poison. Again, they abandon the blood of Haydar. Oh, walls bear witness, Hussein's harbinger. Oh, walls bear witness, Hussein's harbinger. I only call them to Allah's messenger. Oh, Uncle Ali, the son of Aqil. Oh, Uncle Ali, the son of Aqil, has also been killed for helping the city. Go back, O Hussein. Go back, O Hussein. I am begging, Master, go back, O Hussein. What are the cries of Abna Muslim Naqil? Go back, O Hussein. Go back, O Hussein. I am begging, Master, go back, O Hussein. I am begging, Master, go back, O oh, Hussein. Listen to the musibah of a Muslim naqil. In the hereafter, in the hereafter, I wait by the gate. Who does Muslim naqil wait with? Alongside the Prophet, for you we await. I welcome Habib. I welcome Zuhair. The martyrs are alive with the scent of Hussein. I hug my nephews. Arrives your mother. Who does Lady Zahara arrive with? I'm heartbroken seeing her carry us. Tis become oceans. Our hearts in prayer. The lovers are waiting for the news of above the law. Tis become oceans. Our hearts in prayer. 
but then our boss tells us of your condition. Our masters alone, our masters alone, our masters alone, 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 our masters alone. Mashal with your voices, our masters alone, mashallah. Our masters alone, alone, alone. Go back, go Hussein. Go back, go Hussein. I am begging, master. Go back, go Hussein. Let your voices reach Karbala. Go back, go Hussein. Mashallah. Go back, go I am begging, Master. Hussein, go back, oh Hussein, go back, oh Hussein. I am begging, Master, go back, oh Hussein. In the hereafter, in the hereafter, I wait by the gate alongside the Prophet for you. We are waiting. I welcome Habib, I welcome Zuhair, the martyrs arrive with the scent of Hussein. I hug my nephews, arrive your mother, I'm heartbroken seeing her carry us there. Tears back emotions, our hearts impatient, but then Ambas tells us of your condition. I see Fatima rush to Karbala. I see Fatima rush to Karbala. She says Zainab cries out to help her brother. I beg, oh soldiers, have you no mercy? I beg, oh soldiers, have you no mercy? Do not hit Hussein in front of his mother. Wa wa Hussein. Wa wa Hussein. Wa wa I see Fatima rush to Karbala. Why does Fatima run? She says Zainab cries out to help her brother. I beg of soldiers, have you no mercy? Oh, soldiers, have some mercy. Do not hit Hussein in front of his mother. Wa'ala Hussein. Wa'ala Hussein. Wa'ala, wa'ala, wa'ala Hussein. They say a Musiba Lady Fatima had Hussein in her belly. When she was pregnant with your Imam, she goes to Rasulullah, what did she say to your Prophet? Oh my father, why does the child cry? Why does the child cry, oh Fatima? He cries out, Ad al Gharib, Ad al Achan, I am the one who is alone, I am the one who is thirsty. The Prophet says this to Fatima. Fatima says, look at the mother, what does she say? Will you be there for him, O oh Father, on the day of Ashura? Will Ali be there? Rasulullah says, I will not be there, no Haydar. Will Badr Fatima be there for Hussain? He says, you will be there, Fatima. Look what she says. But who will be there for my son, Abu? Let me tell you who will be there. Only Zainab upon the hill crying out. Wa Raila Hussein. Wa Raila Hussein. Wa Raila, Wa Raila, Wa Raila Hussein. Wa Raila.
Voices, inshallah. Do not be shy, brothers. Let your voices reach Karbala. Between hell and the doors of heaven, between hell and the doors of heaven, I stand in front of you, my master. I stand in front of you, my master. Only you can forgive the sinner. Oh, mercy of Hussein. Oh, mercy of between hell and the doors of heaven I stand in front of you my master only you can forgive the sinner oh mercy of Hussein oh mercy of and I bring tears to all of your children. I bring tears to all of your children. You hide your heart that I have broken. Yet you take me within a moment. Oh, kindness of Hussein. Oh, kindness of and I am drowning in the sands of Karbala, running to you, Hussein. I am drowning in the sands of Karbala, running to you, Hussein. I can only be saved by the ark of your salvation, oh, Hussein. Alhamdulillah. Hussein, 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 Alhamdulillah. Hussein, 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 Alhamdulillah. Hussein, 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 Alhamdulillah. Hussein, thank Allah for who, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Hussein, Alhamdulillah for who? Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Hussein, Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Hussein, your journey. I have stopped with my hand. Your journey, I have stopped with my hand. Yet your hand fed me with your water. And after you let us in prayer, forgive me, all oh Hussein. Forgive me, all. Oh. Uh, towards you, I have shown my anger. Towards you, I have shown my anger. But I could not mention your mother, for you are the son of Fatima. I seek for her prayer. I seek for her. Uh, let it rain from the eyes of my dear mother over me for Hussein. Let it rain from the eyes of my dear mother over me for Hussein. So that your mother can welcome us when we reach Kothar. Oh Hussein, let it rain from the eyes of my dear mother over me for Hussein. 
so that your mother can welcome us when we reach Kothar. Oh, Hussein, Alhamdulillah. Oh, Hussein, 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 Alhamdulillah. Call out to Abdullah. Hussein, 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 Mashallah, Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, Hussain, Hussain. Ladies, I raise your voices, Alhamdulillah, Hussain, 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 May Allah accept your amal, Alhamdulillah. Hussain, Hussain, Hussain. Your martyrs, will your lips say my name? Your martyrs, will your lips say my name? Before them, Habib Jonah and Zuhair, allow to defend you today. My life is for Hussain. My life is for Hey, your martyrs, will your lips say my name? Before them, Habib Jonah and Zuhair, allow all to defend you today. My life is for Hussein. My life is for Hussein. The next world for you I will await. The next world for you I will await. Is where you will remain. If only I had a thousand lives, my soul with you, Hussein. My soul with you, Hussein. Oh, people, have you forgotten who is the grandfather of Hussein? Oh, people, have you forgotten who is the grandfather of Hussein? Mohela Ahluk Sahi is the only one that remains. Oh, people, have you forgotten who is the grandfather of Hussein? Mohela Ahluk Sahi is the only one that remains. Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Hussein. Mashallah, Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Hussein, Hussein. Alhamdulillah. Hussein, Hussein, Hussein. Hussein, 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 Alhamdulillah. Hussein, 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 Alhamdulillah, Alladhi khalaqa al Hussein, wa nur azal al Hussein, wa salam. For all your Muhammad and Mu'minat, especially for the amal that you are doing in these nights of Muharram, for the Muhammad and Mu'minat of Hussein Masjid, all the brothers and sisters who get involved in this program, all the brothers and sisters who are commemorating Abu Abdullah, especially for the Muhammad and Mu'minat of Sayyidah Sayyid Haydar Hassanain, recite with the loudest of your voices, as Surah Fatiha, Ma'as Salawat.